people, welcome back to another Fush review. Tonight I'm taking a look at the Figma Kogura Kenzo. Now I say Kogura Kenzo, I'm not even sure if I'm saying that right. In fact, when it comes down to it, I don't remember why I ordered this figure. <laughs> <laughs> it's a dude in a suit. I love figures of dudes in suits. I don't know why. I'm used to big, muscly comic book figures or sci-fi figures. That's it. We don't get enough figures of just everyday, normal people. For the packaging, window shows the figure. Not all of it. There's some hidden space down here. And I feel like this doesn't need to be here. It's just big and empty. They could have shrunk this down, put the logos, the names, and then whatever this is down here and have a big window showing everything. But I'm not a package designer, so what do I know? On the side, you get a picture of the actor from the series. On the back, you get the pretty promotional pictures. I wish it came with these seats. I think that's a different thing you order. It's just a nifty little addition to this picture. And that's probably what this says right here. And then down here is a bunch of unreadables. It probably says something like, ha ha, we got you to buy a dude in a suit. I do like how this looks. I did notice that that is actually the background in the package, but in this picture it looks almost lifelike, even though he's just pointing at a flat surface right there. It, it, that's a very cool picture. On the other side, a picture of the figure. On the top, picture of the figure. On the bottom, same. But I'm going to get this open and check this out. I'm also interested in this briefcase with all the money and everything. And there we go, all out of the package. And I like the figure, but it is not without its faults. It's a little bit fiddly. The joints are kind of weird. Uh, switching out the hands is a bit difficult. But just looking at the sculpt, I like this. It's a dude in a suit. It's one of the more intricate sculpts for a suited figure that I have. Which really, I don't have a lot of them. Everything comes together really, really well. The colors, I like the blue shirt under the gray suit. And then, of course, he accessorizes well with the black sunglasses and a gold bracelet on his left wrist. But the pants, the jacket, all the wrinkles are there. Very nice looking suit. And the paint is even better, for the most part. There's a little bit of shading in the wrinkles. There's almost like a blackish, pearlish tint to it. It's not straight gray. It sticks out at you. And then we get to the hair, and it's just a black color. Uh, it doesn't really stand out, which is okay. Another thing that throws me off about it being a Figma are the joints. They're just very apparent. They're smooth. They're shiny compared to the rest of the figure. The elbows, and it's really noticeable here on the knees. They just look like ball bearings in the back. But putting his hand up next to his face, you can see that there's a definite difference between the two. The hands are cast in that color, but there's almost a lighter color on the ends towards the fingertips. Whereas on the face and the neck, that's painted on. So, yeah, it, uh, whenever you have the two close together, it's really noticeable. Well, even when you have them far apart, it's pretty noticeable. But going over articulation, there's a ball at the top of the neck and then down at the bottom of the neck, too. So, not a lot of range of movement up top, but the bottom of the neck gives you a little bit more. He looks down up is the problem here. He doesn't really look up. Got swivel, got side to side. At the shoulder, there's a ball joint going into the torso, coming out to a ball joint under the shoulder. So it gets a, a round range of movement there. Get out to about right there, and then of course swivel all the way around. The jacket is a soft material, really soft material, so it doesn't really get in the way of articulation there. Single jointed shoulder with a swivel on top and bottom, so you get swivel here, and it comes up to there because of how open the joint is. And the more I mess with this, the more it feels like the joint is coming out of the bicep. But it gets way past 90. Hinge and swivel at the wrist. It works forward and back, and then you can adjust it to go side to side too. There's a ball joint in the torso, and it's not restricted. The vest is a soft material here. So he gets forward, he gets back, he gets side, he gets side all around, and there's rotation. There's a shift down joint in the leg, Comes down to there, it lets him get out to here, forward, and back. The one thing I worry about here, the crotch piece isn't a soft material. It's hard plastic. So when you shift it forward, it feels like the leg scrapes against that part right there. The leg is cast in that color, but I'd still be afraid of kind of scratching right there. And then that shifts back up into the crotch. Single hinge at the knee, but it comes all the way up to here, again, because of how open that joint is right there. And then we get to the ankles. After the great range of movement in a lot of the other joints, except maybe the neck, uh, yeah, this is disappointing. There's not really a whole lot of movement here. There's rotation, which is useless, really. There's no back. There's hardly a little bit forward. There may be a little bit of pivot, but 
yeah, all of your adjustment down there comes from the knees. Now for accessories, he comes with several sets of hands. He comes with a set of fists. He comes with a set of open splayed hands. He comes with a couple of grip hands. The right hand is more open than the left. He comes with another set of hands, but they're more gesturing than they are gripping. Uh, the left hand is more open than the right. There's a right hand for gripping the money. Then there's a right trigger finger. And then there's the right hand with the cigarette in it. Now the figure also came with an extra joint for the wrists which is a good thing because I'm just gonna leave this in the one with the cigarette because I worry about breaking that off from switching it out. And to switch out the hands, I don't understand this much, but when you pull, the whole joint comes out with the hand and you have to kind of fiddle with it to get it out of the hand. And then you put another hand on it. Now the hands come on this tree piece, which I really love this. I wish all figures that came with extra hands came with this. You put the new hand on it and then you put it in there. So it's kind of a pain in the ass. It's not the usual, just pop it out, pop another hand on. It's an extra process. I don't know if that's on purpose or if mine is just loose up inside the arm here, but that's the way I have to do it. For other accessories, he comes with his gun. I, I think this is a 38. I'm not a gun expert. It's really small, but it looks good in his hand. And then he comes with a small stack of cash and a large stack of cash. And this large stack of cash goes inside this briefcase, or well, really it's a suitcase. It looks more like a footlocker, but we'll call it a suitcase. That just opens up. It's not really tight, but it's not loose either. It doesn't come open whenever you mess with it. Gotta kind of put the front end first and then kind of let it drop. I probably will never take this back out of here, so that's good in there. But there is enough room to put the small stack of cash in there too, to hold it. So. Everything stores in there. And then finally, there's another face without the sunglasses. And I don't know how much I like this. It's a little bit cartoony. I don't know if it's the paint job or the sculpt or what's going on here. It just doesn't look right. There's also sticks for the eyes in the back. But I didn't get it any kind of manipulator stick. I don't know if it fell out when I was opening it or if it didn't come with it or if I missed it or what. But yeah, I can't find anything to move that around. And without that stick... It's almost impossible to get up in there and fine tune the eyes. The cool thing about it though is you can't hardly see a seam line where you switch it. Maybe right here, but it just follows the hair. All you do is pull off this one from the front. You still got the back of the head. The screwed up thing here is this face has the moving eyes too, but the sunglasses aren't meant to come off. I know because I pulled this one off. I pulled this side off and it's just glued. It's not really a hole, but you'll never see those eyes under those sunglasses. But then you take this and it plugs right on there. Again, seam is hidden. For comparison, here he is with the Marvel Legends Black Panther. A little bit small for your comic book shelf. And the same can be said for the Marvel Legends cinematic figures. He's a little bit small for this Captain America. But he can almost be fudged in with your SH Figure Arts display. Here he is with the Figure Arts Tony Stark. Just a little bit of height difference, but Tony is wearing his boots. He may have a little gain from wearing part of the armor. So at the end of the day, I like this figure. I like the look of it. It just makes me feel that 70s detective vibe. Like he talks like this. Hey. What are we going to do today? We're going to take down some scumbags. But the figure itself is a little bit fiddly. I don't like the ankles. I don't like the hindered head movement. I wish he could look up a little bit more. But once he's on the shelf, all that goes away. He's suave. He's got that mojo to him. I'll probably never use the face without the sunglasses. And he'll always be holding the gun or the cigarette. Because... 70s. Another thing I wish he did come with was a left hand with the trigger finger. I'd like to have him holding a cigarette with the right, shooting with his left, or vice versa. Anyway, the figure looks great. It may not move the greatest, but it looks great on the shelf. So if you like the review, comment, like, subscribe, and I'll catch you on the fish.